right down here I have the basics of the mechanical drive line. Uh, you'll have to imagine that the motor is right here and the output is going to this sprocket. Then it'll be connected by chain to this very large sprocket. So I'm getting some gear reduction. I'm slowing down uh, the speed from the electric motor. That is on a three quarter inch shaft. This shaft goes all the way through the box on both sides. It is supported by a bearing. And then over here we have a smaller sprocket. That's gonna have another piece of chain going straight down to the transmission. And of course, um, cutting new pieces of chain. What I'm going to use is this uh, device called a chain breaker. So that lets me pop the pin out of the chain and shorten it to whatever length I need. So I've got the drive shaft here or jack shaft. So the sprocket down to the transmission and the left side bearing. Right side bearing I'm gonna put on the outside just for a little more space. So all I'm doing is I'm just kind of roughly getting everything in place, not quite tightening it down yet though. And then the sprocket goes over for the transmission. So now I just need to put the sprocket on the drive shaft of the electric motor and then tighten down the set screw. It's actually two set screws that's on there. A little tight because it's uh, pretty close to the frame so I had to get my other uh, Allen wrench there. And then here, I'm gonna use a, a square key and that large sprocket, just slide it right on. It was actually a pretty tight, a little snug to slide on, so I got out my mallet. Just give it a little tappity tappity tap tap. And then the next thing to make sure was just that the two sprockets were aligned so that the chain would go in a nice straight line between the two of them. I just used a straight edge to figure that out. So on the chain down to the transmission, I just need to get this uh, set key in. Okay, now I can spin my big jack shaft sprocket. Full jack shaft rotates and the chain connects down to the transmission. So on the other end of the jack shaft, I have the chain connected down to the transmission. Uh, I've got it in gear, so if I turn this sprocket, uh, we should be able to see the, the parking brake disc spin and the wheel hub itself should also spin. And also good to note is that the wheel's going in the correct direction. Forward! So I'll have to connect up this chain but the other thing I noticed is it does not work out to an even number of links. Um, I need to get one of those special links that's like kind of half a link for connecting. And if I turn this, the chain looks nice and tight on top, but it looks like I'm gonna have about that much slack. And I never really figured a good way for adjusting this. So maybe I can put an idler right here um, coming off of that motor bolt. So the chain's something more like, more like that. Uh, but that means a trip to the, the hardware store. So I got the master link through from the back. Just have to push that through and add the plate on the other side and then the connecting link. There we go. Minding my fingers here, of course. So it looks like that should be good across the top pulling. I think what I might do now is just apply 12 volts to the motor and uh, see how it works. Here 
this working? Okay, this time we're trying something different. We're putting the tractor transmission in the highest gear, D2, running it at less than 12 volts. So if we imagine three or four times that speed for the regular battery pack and the size of the tires, that's probably pretty good. Now under the hood, I still need a 12 volt battery. It doesn't have to be a big one. Um, I've got this battery handy, and I thought right about there looks pretty good. You know, keeping in mind that the space up above it here, that's where the main battery is going to be. Um, but already there are two holes, one here, one here in the bottom, and those are about, about seven and a quarter, maybe seven and a half inches apart. So what I need to do is I've got some leftover threaded rod. I can put one of these in each of those two holes as a tie down with some sort of material over the top. And I did find um, some scrap angle where one of the set of holes uh, is pretty close. So I'll just cut this to length and this will be the tie down for the top of the battery. I cut this piece of scrap angle to length, ran some threaded rod through over here, um, and then I've got my 12 volt battery, which I'll just set right here with the piece over the top of it. And then I have another piece of threaded rod, which I'll just run up through here. Washer, lock washer, nut. And then the other thing I have is kind of a material that's designed to keep things from sliding around. It's also a nice non-conductor. I also put some protectors over the terminal so I can't accidentally short circuit that or anything. But uh, this non-slip material is also nice um, just as like a little padding in here. And then I can just put the battery right where I want it and tighten that down. Okay, here we go. Big moment. Putting the battery pack in. Yay! These nuts for holding the controller down are just, uh, they're very close, you know, there wasn't much of that heat sink sticking out outside the case. So it's just a little snug. It takes a few minutes, but it is getting there. Still left room over here for the, uh, the main contactor, fuse, um, battery disconnect. Um, but looks like I'm starting to get ready to do actual wiring here. Now, back behind the original instrument panel, uh, it's kind of a mess, everything's all corroded but it looks like this switch here, um, I can probably make use of that. Uh, there is a keyed switch over here, and the key, that does seem to work. Um, here's another switch I was hoping to use, but the uh, end connector, it's just corroded away. Um, so I think I'm gonna just try to unplug all this and pull that away and see what I can reuse. Here we go, it's the control panel. I'm just trying to reuse uh, what I can here. Uh, this switch here was still good, um, so I, I just cleaned up the contacts on it and connected two wires, new terminals, and then just for example, I have those hooked up down here to my multimeter, uh, set so that it just beeps when there's contact. Uh, set it up down here. That way I can flip the switch, test it, and it beeps when it's working right. So back up here. So just 
just kind of a, a nice way of uh, testing a switch. So that, uh, those white wires are going to run to the battery for the 12 volt system. So that'll be my 12 volt on off. I crimped on a fuse holder to the end of the one white wire. Um, it already had a 10 amp fuse in there. That'll be good for now. And I'm just gonna take that speed connection, run it down to the positive of that little 12 volt battery. And now, I, now I've got switched power. I just gotta run the ground. Well, it was pretty exciting to get the motor controller in and get the wiring started, but even more important than that was the mechanicals, getting the jack shaft in and actually uh, running under power. I'm pretty excited about it. So until next time, stay charged up.